Krishna Janmashtami is a major Hindu festival which celebrates the birth of Lord Krishna who is the eighth incarnation of Lord Vishnu the supreme god of the Hindus It is said that Krishna was born approximately 5200 years ago in Mathura At that time Mathura was ruled by Kansa who was an unjust and tyrannical ruler He usurped the throne from his father Ugrasen, captured him and put him in the dungeons. No one was happy under his rule. Mother Earth took the form of a cow and went to Lord Brahma with her plight. Lord Brahma then summoned Lord Vishnu, who assured Mother Earth that he would take birth as Lord Krishna to end Kansa's tyranny. The one person whom Kans loved and adored was his sister Devaki who was a kind loving and caring woman Devaki's marriage was fixed with a noble man named Vasudev After Devaki and King Vasudev were married Kans decided that he would drive them home himself He would honor them with a royal courtesy as per the traditions of the time As Kans sat down on the chariot to drive them home he heard a divine voice The voice that came from the thundering skies announced, "O oh, Kans, why are you so happy? Beware, the sister you love so much will give birth to the son who will destroy you. The eighth son born to Devaki will kill you." On hearing this, Kans burst into a rage. He said he would slay his sister before she gives birth to any child. Vasudev begged Kans not to kill Devaki. He explained it is not justified for him to kill his own sister on her wedding day. He asked if he could spare Devaki's life. Vasudev promised that he would hand over every child that was born to him and Devaki. He sincerely requested Kans to trust him. Kans agreed to spare Devaki's life if Vasudev kept his promise. He ordered the wedding procession to return back to Mathura. When they reached Mathura, Kans imprisoned Vasudev and Devaki in the palace dungeon. One day, Kans was sitting in his chambers when he got the news that Devaki had given birth to her first child. Kans immediately went to the prison. He asked Devaki to hand over the child, but Devaki refused. He snatched the child from Devaki and killed her firstborn. Kansa also killed the next 5 babies born to Devaki. One night, Lord Vishnu appeared in Devaki's dreams and said that the divine king of the snakes, Sheshnag, would be born to her as her seventh child. He told her that the child would not be killed by Kans. Devaki was then pregnant for the seventh time. This time Lord Vishnu summoned Yogmaya and told her to transfer the baby from Devaki's womb to Rohini's womb who was another wife of King Vasudev At that time Rohini was living in Gokul under the protection of Nanda and Yashoda Thus on the behest of Lord Vishnu Yogmaya transferred the baby from Devaki to Rohini's womb and in this way the seventh child was saved the seventh child was in fact the incarnation of sheshnag the snake on which lord vishnu rests the child was named balaram due to this mysterious birth of balaram he is also known as sankarshan the gods as they knew it informed kans that devaki's seventh child was a stillborn by the end of 8 years kans per his knowledge had already destroyed seven children born to Devaki and Vasudev in the ninth year Devaki was expecting her eighth child she knew the fate of the child and was extremely worried she had seen her brother murder her seven children it was the eighth night in the month of shravan a terrible storm erupted in mathura heavy rain and winds threatened to destroy everything they touched The holy river of Yamuna which was always in the state of tranquility assumed a monstrous form. It broke its embankments and swelled like an ocean. 
exactly at midnight devaki gave birth to her eighth son as soon as the child was born the prison cell was filled with a bright light it was as if a thousand suns had descended at once into that dark and dingy cell vasudev was awakened by this bright light he saw that devaki was in deep slumber and a little baby was lying beside her just then he heard a divine voice vasudev get up this is your newborn son take him to gokul nand and yashoda have also given birth to a daughter tonight leave your son in their house and bring their daughter back to this cell they along with the entire world will think that this child is their own son your son will be safe in their house saying this the bright light went out the prison cell was dark once again vasudev lifted the little boy he kept the child in a basket and started thinking of ways to leave the prison without being noticed by anyone as soon as the child was put in the basket the iron door of his cell opened by itself vasudev stepped out and was surprised to find that all the guards were sleeping as if under a magical spell vasudev came out of the prison unnoticed carrying the basket on his head he came to the banks of yamuna and noticed that the river had swelled so much due to the heavy rain it felt like an ocean with no other means in sight he started crossing the river on foot he was worried that both he and his child would be swept away by the strong currents of the river before leaving his cell he had covered the basket with a piece of cloth to protect the child from rain it seemed that a mere piece of cloth was no match to the torrential rain which showed no signs of going down just then a multi-headed snake was moving towards them the snake covered vasudev and the child with its hood effectively protecting them from the rain this snake was adi anant shesha or simply sheshnag vasudev crossed the river and reached gokul he went straight to his friend nandaraj's house the doors lay open and vasudev entered the living chambers He found Nandaraj and his wife Yashoda in deep slumber. An infant was laying beside Yashoda, awake as if waiting for him. Vasudev placed his little boy beside Yashoda, kissed him goodbye and picked the little girl up. He kept her in the basket and without even looking back left the place. Vasudev felt as if he was leaving behind a part of his soul. but he hurriedly traced his steps back to the prison on his way back adi shesha again covered him and the little infant from the incessant rain and thunder as soon as he placed the baby beside his wife devaki in the prison cell the infant gave a loud cry devaki got up from her sleep and picked the baby up in her arms she thought the little girl was her own child She began to cry thinking about what her brother would do to the baby. The prison guards too were awake by now. They immediately informed Kans about the newborn. They also informed that the newborn was a girl and not a boy as prophesied. Kans hurried to the dungeons. He did not want to take any chances with the eighth child. The prophecy had clearly mentioned that the eighth child of Devaki would be the reason behind his death. He knew he would eliminate the baby whether a girl or a boy. On reaching the prison cell, Devaki pleaded the baby's life, but Kansa was unmoved. He snatched the baby from Devaki's hand and threw her against the wall. But the baby did not strike the wall. Instead, she remained suspended in the air and then suddenly took the form of an eight-handed goddess. She was riding a lion and held different weapons in her eight hands. Kansa was terrified. On the other hand, Devaki and Vasudev stood in front of the goddess, filled with reverence. 
there was a bright halo light behind her the goddess roared evil kansa your slayer has already taken birth he is alive and safe one day he will come back and punish you for your sins this day forth you will find no peace you will keep thinking about your inevitable end i can end your life this very moment but you must wait till the right time saying this the goddess disappeared kansa was dumbstruck meanwhile there were celebrations in gokul everyone came to offer their blessings to the little boy everyone was celebrating the birth of nand and yashoda's son nand and yashoda had named their child krishna entire gokul wore a festive appearance that day all the people of gokul danced in joy and flocked to nanda's house to see baby krishna and to offer gifts <laughs>